There are other patterns that are common between the five asymptotic notations that we uh, thought of as relations between functions and the five arithmetic relations between numbers. For example, we know that t of n is theta of f of n is the same as saying t of n is big O of f of n and t of n is big omega of f of n. In a similar way, to say that the number t is equal to the number f is the same as claiming that t is less than or equal to f and t is greater than or equal to f. Note that we are using analogous we are uh, using the same five correspondences that we saw in the last video to uh, make these analogies. Here's another pattern. T of n is big O of f of n is the same as saying f of n is big omega of t of n. This is something we have seen in a previous video. One can again observe parallels between the big O and the big omega notation here and the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to relations between numbers. Because if the number t is less than or equal to the number f, it's the same as saying that the number f is greater than or equal to the number t. Likewise, if t of n is little o of f of n, that's equivalent to claiming that f of n is little omega of t of n. And drawing parallels with the arithmetic relations, if the number t is less than the number f, that's the same as claiming that the number f is greater than the number t. So you can see that there are plenty of parallels between uh, the five asymptotic notations which relate to functions and the five arithmetic relations which relate to numbers. But there are some differences as well. Here's one difference. For any two numbers t and f, exactly one of the following must hold. Either t must be equal to f, or it must be less than f, or it must be greater than f. It's always possible to, to, to compare two numbers in this way. But it's possible to have two functions which are actually not comparable in any of these three ways. It's possible that t of n may not be theta of f of n, t of n may not be little o of f of n, and t of n may not be little omega of f of n. Here's an example. Because uh, before we look at this example, this may appear strange at first sight because saying that none of these three holds is equivalent to claiming that if we take the limit of n tending to infinity, t of n divided by f of n, we are saying that the value of this limit is neither 0, it's neither infinity, nor is it some constant c greater than 0. How is that possible? Well, look at these two functions, t of n and f of n. t of n is equal to n, and f of n is n to the power 1 plus sine n. Now, you may see that, you may note that uh, for very large values of n, f of n could be as low as 1 and it could be as high as n square. Sin n is sin n is a function that's going to oscillate between minus 1 and 1. So the power of n here is going to oscillate from 1 minus 1 which is 0 to 1 plus 1 
which is 2. So for some values of n, f of n will be n to the power 0. And for other values of n, it will be as large as f of n, as large as n to n square. And of course, it will take, the powers will take intermediate values also between 0 and 2. And this is going to continue indefinitely in a cyclical way. So, if we take the limit of n tending to infinity between t of n and f of n, this limit is not going to be well defined because for some values of n, f of n is n to the power 0. And if you take n, f of n is n to the power 0 at that particular value. t of n divided by n to the power 0 is just t of n. And if t of n is a function that's increasing with n, then, you know, for that particular value of n, the ratio is going to be very large. It's going to be as large as n. But at other values of n, it's possible that 1 plus sin n could be 0. Oh, sorry, 1 plus sin n could be 2 because sin n is 1. When sin n is 1, n to the power 1 plus sin n would be n squared. And in that case, t of n, which is n, would be divided by n squared. So the ratio would be 1 by n for those values of n. And if n is very large, you can see that the ratio will be close to 0. So as we go on increasing n, we are going to see that the ratio is going to oscillate. Sometimes it's going to come down to, um, sometimes it's going to come down to a value that's very close to 0. And at other times it's going to rise to a value as, as large as n. Then after some time again it will come down to a value very close to 0. And again it is going to rise up to a value close to n. So, the ratio is not going to converge, it's going to keep, it's going to keep oscillating. And so this limit is not well defined. We, we can neither say that it's zero, nor can we say that it's infinity, nor can we say that it's some positive constant. It's not stabilizing at all. It's going to keep oscillating. And so in such cases, we cannot relate these two functions by any of these three relations. In fact, we, we cannot relate these two functions by any of the five relations. We can't even say that t of n is big O of f of n. We can't even say that t of n is big omega of f of n. None of these five relations hold for functions of this form. So I could have said for any two numbers t and f, exactly one of the following must hold. This is one way to say it. Another way to say it is either t, t must be less than or equal to f or t must be greater than or equal to f. One of these two must hold. Analogously, one would claim that one of these two must hold because less than or equal to is analogous to big O and greater than or equal to is analogous to big omega. But we've seen that for these two functions, neither of these hold and neither of these three hold. So none of the five hold. So this is one, one difference between carrying be, between these five uh, asymptotic relations or notations and the five relations between numbers. So one shouldn't carry the analogy too far.